Better Call Saul was a very unusual circumstance because um, we we uh, opened a writer's room and what we what Vince and I had written was probably a two page pitch of what the show would be. And it was a completely different show from the one that you saw. And so the first thing that we did was, well, we had a question. There's a question that, that Vince and I came up with really early on, which was, uh, what problem does becoming Saul Goodman solve? Mm-hmm. So, and and I don't think we really had an answer to that. So we started just asking ourselves, well, what was what was this guy's background? Where is he from? How do you become Saul Goodman? What was, what was it? And so we we basically in the writer's room, we had a lot of images and we, and we all, but we also talked very linearly about mm-hmm. what was, what was his life? Where was he born? What was this? And that was in a way that we hadn't done with Walter White at all. We kind of discovered that as we, as we went along and we didn't know where we were going to begin. And I think that the big, one of the big moments for us was when we said, Oh, well, let's start with the, the years where he's uh, working from the back of a nail salon. That seems like a good place to start. And that was a clip from Peter Gold, the creator of Better Call Saul, one of the writers for Breaking Bad. Tonight, we're going to be talking about that last episode, a little bit about the last season, obviously the bigger picture, and then maybe touching on the whole 15-year lineage of Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, all those stories, how they kind of intertwine. So Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are not the same. There are a lot of similarities in style and content and everything else. What were your thoughts like finishing Breaking Bad and seeing Better Call Saul was actually coming out? What were your first thoughts about that? Yeah, I remember this uh, pretty vividly because I think the last like season or two of Breaking Bad, it kind of like I'd followed it since the beginning, but it kind of took on like the Game of Thrones. There was like a water cooler community around it. So like at work, there were people talking about a white dude cooking a bunch of meth. So it was kind of uh, it was a weird time in television, but a great time. So so I was really into it. And the Saul character I always liked, but he was never really someone I was crazy interested in, like his backstory or where he would go at the end of the series. So Don't worry about that. When they announced it, I was kind of like, it felt like a cash grab or some kind of, sellout type deal and i think they aired that pilot after uh like a walking dead finale or something mm. there was a reason i remember watching it because it was like stay, yeah. stay after the episode for yada 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 so uh i remember sitting through that pilot and i was like ah, that, that seemed cool but i wasn't necessarily hooked so i actually yeah. backed off of it for at least a couple of weeks there to uh kind of see what the reaction was and then i mean it turned into something almost on the same level in my opinion yeah i definitely think it, it it got to that level pretty quick i mean saul's kind of the comic relief in breaking bad so it's like you wouldn't expect it to be as good as it is but if they're going to put that same type of care and effort into it and really think about you know what the show was was like what makes someone turn into this guy and that we kind of got to see him right. go from jimmy to saul and uh, really back and forth towards the end of that and then to the final conclusion of like you know who is he what is his identity and a lot of that's kind of baked in there but yeah it's it's i'm trying to think of something like it i mean there's so many failures from trying to lean into like the side character and make him the main character it's like yeah you think you want to see that all like i'm thinking about like watching glorious bastards you really just want to see the bastards the whole time there's so much else going on like would it be as powerful or is it powerful because you see them in these tiny moments but i think better call Saul proved that you you can do that you can expand upon it if you make it grounded and real and just put a lot of effort into making this character great yeah i think the variable there is really that creative team like they took a character like i said just uh a guy get like chemistry teacher dying of cancer and made him that interesting and the fact that i doubted they could do the same thing with a character like saul is probably on me but it takes a talent uh obviously these two two guys with vince gilligan and peter gould i think were pretty much the heads behind it to be able to grab what seems like an ancillary character and make what 60 plus episodes of legitimately interesting content out of that person it's it's a testament of uh great filmmaking and they probably had a little bit of encouragement or something from AMC as well, because they are kind of doing that with Walking Bad. I feel like Better Call Saul kind of did it first, but it was always expected with, you know, the crossovers from Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, which eventually happened with Morgan. And they kind of now they've sprung out to like five or six shows or whatever they're doing now. And yeah. it's, of course, we can't ignore that's in the time of Marvel doing it so well. So I think there's a lot of stuff 
happening at one time that kind of made this work in terms of like network approval. And then they really brought the goods with like the show itself. I also think it's like interesting that it's not, it's great when we see Walter and Jesse and some of the side characters, it's great that Mike is on the show, but it's, they're not like, they're not like this thing that's saving the show, which I think we see in, you know, maybe some of the the DC failures in, in movies that didn't work for whatever reason. Like we're not just like leaning into the cameo. The cameo is strengthening what we're seeing there. And we really see that in this last episode with like Jesse and, and Walter kind of showing up very briefly just to kind of reinforce what we're already watching. A slip and fall. Yeah, that's how I put myself through bartending school. So... So you were always like this. Yeah, I think uh, kind of just reading over the information around it, uh, what the showrunners were saying, like the idea of what the show became was instead of an extension of Breaking Bad, it was like a frame. I thought that was kind of an interesting term to use, like Breaking Bad existed within the box of Better Call Saul in a way. So I think that once once we all heard that there were going to be a cameo, everyone would get hyped up for kind of what we would see and the way that it was used was so almost like, the opposite of what you would expect it can get like i said it added more weight to it just like due to the scarcity of it's like two scenes of dialogue basically and it makes just the words that we hear from walter white have like that much more much more twist and much more bang yeah i think it still kind of worked i mean like mike is literally older but he kind of looks the same like there's only one that maybe i was curious like is you know is brian cranston going to shave his head again i wasn't sure if he was wearing one of those caps or whatever and then like Jesse Plemons is obviously a, a bit different because he was like 20 and very thin and it was a little bit heavier when he did the El Camino kind of appearance there. So yeah. other than just a few things that are kind of in your subconscious, like it's it's a pretty flawless, like both shows and El Camino. But let's kind of move into like what this show is about. What we kind of see the end of was Gus and Kim and Mike and Jimmy slash Saul, however you want to kind of say that. A lot of this to me like came down to this. The middle of the last season was like Howard's death and how they all dealt with that and what that kind of led to. Um, what were some of your thoughts on like that kind of crazy surprise in the middle of a pretty normal show? Yeah, it was uh, definitely felt like a breaking bad episode almost you know because the stakes were so elevated and then you had something that really is like background chatter almost in the better call Saul world which was like the gangster stuff you know like we never really saw never saw Saul actually like get that up up close and personal but it was it's heartbreaking like uh that character was so annoying for such a long time but all the stuff they put him through like it literally turned you against jimmy and uh i think it's obvious with the way the last half of the season plays out that we're kind of meant to follow Kim as kind of our moral compass. Like how would we react to that same character in that situation? Definitely up to that point, probably the best episode of the show I'd seen. And kind of like I was saying, it just, it was so much build up and such a great payoff. And then it literally like the show could have ended there. You know, we can kind of like assume, okay, this is how he became who he was. And, but the fact that we got kind of like the epilogue, which kind of served as the epilogue to breaking bad as well was, just a cherry on top of the ice cream. And in my interview with Peter Gold, the creator, you can, uh, you guys listening can click on that link below to read or listen to that interview. He said something pretty interesting about like Kim's part. He was kind of surprised how big of a part she was going to play. That was very unexpected, which is uh, kind of ironic because that was the same truth about Jesse and, and Breaking Bad that these characters that they really have to have their protagonists lean on or in this case fall in love with really change things for them so here's a little clip of peter talking about their relationship and how that kind of really shifted things towards the end if kim if he and kim hadn't broken up i i don't know if he would have ever been uh hurt enough to become saul goodman (laughs) you know uh so it's it's a double triple sided it's it's a conundrum uh, and, and hopefully in the best possible way, because Kim, I don't think he would have ever been uh, his best self without her, but I don't think he would have ever been his worst self uh, if they hadn't had that relationship. I don't think it's her fault. I just think, I just, I think, uh, you know, she, they, and the relationship ended and then she went and lived a blameless life, maybe too blameless because she wasn't doing any harm, but she sure wasn't doing much good either. And then uh, he went off and became his, uh, his worst self. Uh, and that's, that was, uh, uh, you know, I think that's on him. 
So in the one scene where we do see Jesse, we see him outside of the office. And that's actually when Kim is there signing the divorce papers. And she kind of asked him or he asked her, you know, is he good? And he's referring to like, is he a good lawyer? But what she's thinking about is like, is he a good person? I think she says like, when I knew him, he was. So she's really changed her whole perspective on him when she was you know, in some ways spiraling down, doing cons, like living that life with him kind of towards the end, as much as they all kind of fought this thing. I mean, I think Saul was like a reluctant antagonist. Kim was kind of reluctant to join him, but it was also kind of fun. And then everyone just kind of made Jimmy go in that route. What were your kind of thoughts on that, on that scene with Jesse? Again, it's so much, so many undertones there, because at this point, It'd been like what six or seven years since I really seen Jesse, and I'd been with uh, Ray Seahorn, who played Kim all this time, and kind of got to see her uh, or appreciate her as an actor just as much as I appreciated what he was, what he had going on. So it was kind of cool to pair up those two characters together, considering, especially like you were saying, they were both literally going to be tossed away earlier in their uh, in their respective shows, and kind of came back to be the audience for the two the the two quote unquote protagonist in these two shows. So I think it's it's the smartest possible way you could wrap up that is to have those two people talk to each other. And then the fact that she kind of like Jesse got to see this quote unquote good person who was good at bad things kind of leaned into that and they kind of enjoyed it. It's kind of like us as the audience again, we're kind of uh we like watching Tony Soprano. We like to see like these bad things that these people do and we kind of go along for the ride up to a point, but then we have to kind of we have to find ourselves and realize that we're not capable of those things. Like she said, this was not, it's not what she signed up for. And it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt, essentially. So there's such great, like the show does such a good job at like the juxtaposition. I think that's a lot of the buttons, the way they end it with those, them two in that, in the light scene in the jail cell, it's, it's the pilot was the same way the finger guns, the different things like that, that they're kind of showing. Well, that's just like shows how well they do the different timelines in the show. And every character is a juxtaposition of someone else. Like even when we're kind of revealed that, like, I think it's kind of proven that like Gus is gay in one episode. Yeah. He chooses not to pursue love. Now I'm, I'm going to assume it has nothing to do with like being gay or something like that. I, like in the closet, I would assume it's more that like he knows the lifestyle he lives. And that's the opposite of what Walter does. So he's like avoiding like bringing someone down with him. Walter does the opposite of that. And even that scene with, I think Jeff's, I think Jeff's the final character that like Cinnabon Saul kind of ruins his life. Like Saul is still kind of out there ruining people's lives for his own benefit, for his own good. And I think all that kind of like, that comes back to roost towards the end. And, and that's, I compared this to flight. Even when I was talking to Peter, uh, the end of flight, Denzel Washington, says he can't lie one more time. He's been lying his whole life, and there when it matters the most, he can't do it. I felt some of that was Saul, but it didn't feel like a moral compass. It felt like it was more about Kim. Um, what did you kind of... I loved that we got to see him like be Saul again and kind of wiggle his way out of it, but then like something within him actually made him change, it seemed like. It's showtime. Yeah, it was kind of cool to see like him uh, put on the cape again for a minute. Like he had everybody in the position that he wanted him, kind of just to prove that he could do it maybe to himself one last time. Because in the end, I think he essentially ends up accepting like a crazy amount of jail time, essentially the rest of his life, like seventy plus years or something. So yeah, but yeah, it was it was great. It was um, it was like I say, it was cool to see him as the quote unquote Gene character, uh, kind of dip back into the Saul, but. It's like it never left him. The whole thing, I guess, kind of for me, tied back to the relationship with his brother. He just always had like a natural antagonism, like a hatefulness about him, maybe trying to subvert everything that his brother stood for by kind of leaning into the criminal element. And I think that kind of is just what ended up becoming who he truly was as a person. But in the end, I think like we said, with kind of like with Gus, we saw that, that he's the type of person who in realizing who he really was. Cause I think Walt, the lot when we see Walt in the finale, he also kind of tells him like, you've always been like this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's kind of like in denial in that moment, you know? Uh, but I think once he finally gets arrested and all this goes down, he kind of realizes that, yeah, he's probably right. And then kind of like us who kind of realizes the monster that he is, he decides that he kind of has to put himself down. If that makes sense, you know? Yeah, I think in that scene, so there's two scenes with Walter. One, they're kind of in the RV. It's more of a dramatic type scene. But then later is when they're hiding underground. Uh, is it Robert Forrester is the actor that's kind of the one who like hides them both. And then that kind of yeah. 
you know, spirals these other stories out. But he tells a story about his only regret, and it's like something like getting injured as Slipping Jimmy back in the day. And, and Walter yeah, says, "Oh, so you, you've always been like this." I think that's the like that's the name of the show, Breaking Bad. The idea, the pitch was like Mister Chips turns a Scarface. It's kind of how Vince Gilligan pitched that. So knowing that, like. At least in Walter's perspective, Jim, Jimmy's always kind of been Saul. Like he's always kind of been in that way, and he looks for shortcuts, but he also finds them. He's also intelligent enough to find them. I've always thought a lot about a lot of like some smaller time criminals. Like if you just put the same effort into like being an entrepreneur, you'd probably be wildly successful, you know. Right. But I think it's just like knowing he can do it and seeing all the angles. And he's got to like it. Like he's like con men like that type of thing. They like kind of getting over on people. They like the idea that they're not really taking from you. They're kind of convincing you to hand things over. I think I love all those heist movies that kind of touch on that idea as well. It's almost like a magician in a way, you know, it's not necessarily that he wants to harm people or fool people, but it's the idea that he's like an elevated status. He's capable of this trick and he can just blow your mind. You not even know it is. It's a thrill that I think he never truly gets past. So as we get to that that final scene, I mean, this show really is about, you know, Jimmy or Saul and Kim and how that relationship worked. It seems to be the reason or one of the main reasons that, you know, in the end that he's in the courtroom and kind of confesses and says, call me Jimmy rather than, you know, call me Saul rather than live in that persona. It's almost like it reminds me of the end of Fight Club, though, which so many things do that, like, it's too late. When he gets on that bus, they're chanting his name. They're, ch they're chanting the commercial jingle and everything like that. Like, it's already yeah. spread out there. And it's, as viewers, though, I think it's, like, more freeing to know that he's in there as Saul as opposed to out there hiding as, as Gene or whatever. Like, I, you don't really want to see him do that. Like, we want to see him be who he is. Even if it does, you know, he's, I think he has 86 years. He's got a lifetime in jail, um, but right. we get to see him like be who he really is, like who he's always been, according to Walter. Yeah, I think even in like the ride into the to the prison or whatever, the guys are like asking him for favors. And yeah, you kind of realize that he realizes that I'm kind of made for this. Like yeah, my life's not going to be that bad. I still get to be Saul, essentially, but uh, just under lock and key to keep the rest of us safe. So we get the moments of, you know, Kim has kind of went and lived this life in Florida and she's almost been hiding. I think her coming to see him in jail and using her bar card, which has expired, is like a, a small last act of rebellion, perhaps. And it's kind of ambiguous. Like, is something going to happen to Kim? It might. Is something bad going to happen to Saul in jail? Or is he going to, I feel like he's more than likely going to live a pretty good life in there, kind of big that you know, that connector type guy that gets things for people like the Morgan Freeman character in Shawshank or something like that. Yeah. He's probably going to do pretty well in there. Like I do want to kind of talk about that last scene where we're looking at the black and white. And for those, I think everyone has seen the show, hopefully or else we've ruined it and spoiled the entire thing. But, um, mm. but there is a, they do a great job of the black and white and they've always done a really good job of like showing different timelines on these two shows. Like, Walter kind of changes from like, I think it's like wearing green to more wearing brown. And it almost like changes as the show goes on. Obviously, his hair is different. But we see a lot of unique changes. And part of that is the black and white. And then this, la this last scene where she kind of sneaks in and they're talking. And it's just, they're just like, you know, thinking about this life together. Like it's their relationship is over in, in many ways. I doubt they would ever see each other again, but her lighting up that cigarette is reflective of the past. And it also like glows red. So the script actually reads, you can download the script below. Jimmy passes a cigarette over to Kim. The tip glows red, glows reds in capital, a tiny bit of color in a monochrome world. That's one of those things when you're watching it. You're wondering like, is it in the screenplay or is it something they chose to do later? Yeah. I remember cause it's, it's like watching the wizard of Oz or something, you know, it's, like literally you think about the black and white aspects of Dorothy's world. Like she's in a prison almost in her own mind. And that's literally like Saul as this gene character. He's obviously not who we, who we knew him to be. So like there's, there's nothing in his life. He's essentially already in prison. And then he kind of just gets that literally like a flare of hope, just remembering uh, the times he had with Kim. And that's where that, the flare of the cigarette comes from, I believe. So I think it's, it's a beautiful hallmark. It's hard to, Hard to catch if you're really not looking for it because it's such a small little burn there. But uh, yeah, again, it just reminds me of a lot of like historical film stuff. You think about The Wizard of Oz and the color comes into Dorothy's life and then 
when she goes back home, we're still in black and white, but there's still it's just, it's that touch of uh, of the happiness in there. Yeah, one of the last questions when I was talking to to Peter Gold, we I, I brought up that I'd read Ben Skilligan wrote the ending of Breaking Bad, then later said, "Oh, this is kind of like The Searchers, the John Wayne film." So I asked him if he had any other films in mind. He said he had a, had a lot of favorite movies from the '70s, such as The Graduate and The Candidate. Um, but the real goal of that is to like make something a little bit more open ended. So as much as we want to speculate what we think happened or what seems to have happened. Um, I just really like the idea that it, it is open and it's not super clear, but it was still satisfying. The best endings are inevitable and yet still kind of surprising is what they say. Um, so I think what's great about this is something you said earlier, too, is like we were, we said, you mentioned the Sopranos, which we've talked about over and over and over. There's a different feeling. And again, let's let's assume that that ending is, is less ambiguous and, and Tony most likely died. That's that's the most like. Right. You know, spot on ending is that probably once he once a character dies though it feels over where once this character we know he's in jail but he seems to be more happy about that it's it's something different i've never really thought of this before i used to just think characters were over but as a viewer that character is still kind of alive in your mind like it still feels open it still feels like there could be more or you can as a viewer kind of think about his story in your own way yeah i think it's it's interesting especially when we now that we've all kind of really got into the flow of like serialized television storytelling, like we're spending a decade with a group of people, you know, and I think if at the end of that, if you kind of get the idea of trying to like reflect on it and think back like, Oh yeah, this person died, that person died. It's like death, especially in the storytelling is such a, I'm going to say like a generic way to end the story, but it's just so fine. It's just so fine. I like her saying it's, it's kind of, it's kind of all you can remember about a character over time, you know, like whether they made it or not, as opposed to someone like Jimmy, like he's still out there. So like when I think back on the finale, I'm thinking of 20 different things that happened, you know, as opposed to just the last frame I saw of him getting, I don't know, shipped in prison or something crazy like that, you know, and same thing with Tony Soprano. Like when you leave it up for debate, it just, I don't know, it adds more longevity, I think, to the storytelling and to the characters. Uh, obviously we're still talking about, Tony 20 years later. So. Yeah. Some of the best ones are more ambiguous as opposed to just kind of killing off the lead. Where I used to think like, well, if the story ends, it should be the end of that character's life. But I think leaving it open-ended like that is a little bit more interesting as a viewer. And especially where we rewatch shows so often today and can kind of dip it in out of those worlds is more than we used to, at least a perspective of how we think of people in the real world. How do we, cause we all, you know, we tell ourselves stories. It's how we construct our lives and, People you remember, people you think about, it's, it's it's a continuous thing. You know, it's a constantly like a recycling of memories. So I think that's kind of how, te why television characters are so captivating because we spend so much time with them and we kind of get to know them as people. And just truncating that, this is just like a very, like a, f a feature film way to do things in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that is our show. So let us know in the comments, what did you guys think? Was this a perfect ending? Was something missing? Could it have been better? In the, down, in the links below, you can find the link to the article. You can listen to my interview with Peter Gold. And you can also read the screenplay where Peter actually shared that final screenplay recently on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it. You can find all that below. But before you take off, I do want to show one more clip. This is Peter giving some advice to novice writers. So make sure you watch this, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next episode. Boy, I, I, I'm, I'm not great with advice. The only thing I'd say is that try to find people um, who are, do it, love the same thing that you love and, and try to try to you know watch movies with them and, and share your your writing and your work with them. And we're also in a in a in a really special time. Uh, in a lot of ways, because now you can make something on your own that's that other people can watch. I mean, you can put it on YouTube. Uh, you know, a lot of us, my my, a lot of people in my generation, you had to go to film school to get to get equipment that you now have in your phone. And so, I, I think that this, you know, work, do a lot of work, make a lot of mistakes, uh, learn from them. I mean, that's that's the that's the maybe the most difficult thing is to 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 learn from learn from the pain of knowing that you the thing that you wanted to do didn't work. Uh, but also, uh, I think you have to be incredibly tenacious. Not and certainly tenacious to make a living, but I think also tenacious 
to get good at this stuff and to to have your uh uh have your work come anywhere near what your hopes for the work are and and i think finally you have to take pleasure uh take pleasure in doing it because that's it's ultimately the doing of it that has to be the biggest the biggest pleasure not not all the stuff that you might imagine comes with the doing it perfect that was great thanks again for your time i really appreciate it sure